Hi, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm covering everything that you need to know to get up and running with a new and very exciting model for table detection. This is a Florence 2 variant. It's called TFID, and it's honestly one of the best table detection models that I have seen. So if you wanna get up and running with this, and if you're working on a MacBook and have had trouble working with Florence 2 models, then especially stick around. But let's just go ahead and jump right in and start doing some really cool table detection very easily in this video. Now that we're in our Jupyter Notebook, let's go ahead and start working with this model. The first thing we're gonna to need to do in this first cell is import all of our required libraries. Transformers is gonna basically be the main library here that lets us load up the model and the processor very easily. And we're gonna be working with matplotlib for plotting out the actual images. And if you'll notice, this next cell isn't on the Hugging Face repository's readme. And there's a reason for that. I'm on a MacBook and this model right now, at least as it stands at the recording of this video, doesn't work if you're on a Mac. However, I managed to find this solution on another Hugging Face Florence 2 um, uh, discussion page and this solution works just out of the gate. So go ahead and copy and paste this function and everything will work just fine for you. It might take a little bit of time because it needs to download the model and the processor, but while we're going ahead and loading that up, let's take a look at what's happening here. We're working with this TFID base. Now there's two different versions here. There's a base and a large. Large, of course, is gonna be better. It's also gonna be larger. There's another variant here that you have, which is without captions. And we're gonna see the difference in the effect of that in just a minute. I'm working with the base, which means it's gonna capture both the figures and their captions and the table with their captions. If you don't want the captions, then use the without caption model. So let's go ahead and jump down to this next cell and I'll go through this really quickly once again. This is the exact code that you're going to see on the Hugging Face repository for this model, but what you're going to notice is that I packaged it all as a function. This just makes it a little easier to work with and reproduce or reuse uh, later on in our script or in our notebook. And now finally comes the fun time of actually using the model. So we're gonna pass this URL to this function, which is gonna go ahead and process everything. So essentially now you can use this model repeatedly with a one single line of Python. So I'm gonna load up at first the default URL. This is the one that comes with the repository in the, um, in the readme. And so this is the one that the author really wants you to use first. And there's a reason for that. It's very good. We've got the figure captured perfectly along with its caption. And we've got the table captured perfectly along with its caption. But again, this is something I would expect. Now, the first thing that I do after I test it on some a model on what the author wants me to test it on is I think to myself, how does this work with other kind of data? So I grab a few random images off the internet, which is what I typically do. And this is a recipe. Now this was meant to be a very tricky problem because if we look at this page, there's not really a clear table. There could be a case made for maybe there's a recipe being a table, but it's not really a table by what the authors would have defined as a table. But if we scroll down, we'll see that we have one table flagged. And this is why this is kind of an unfair test. I guess you could make a very clear case for this being a table. In fact, uh, we have the word table right here. We also have a little bit of a line up above and a little bit of a line down below. It's probably those features of the image that are causing this to be flagged as a table more than anything else. But again, it could be the features of the text that make up the word table, because oftentimes you'll see the word table appear on tables and publications. So I think all these things are causing this to be flagged as a false positive. But again, not something I'm too worried about. It's a very understandable false positive. Let's go ahead and load up something else though that's not as mean. This is a table of contents. And I think this is a really good test because a table of contents is essentially one big table. And what we'll see is that it's flagged this entire page as a table. Ideally, what I would like to have seen is for maybe something a little tighter around the table of contents. But again, I'm not too concerned about that because it has flagged correctly this entire thing as a table. So again, not ideal, but not unexpected and not bad. And then finally, I wanted to use uh, what I would consider maybe something a little out of scope, which is an older publication and an older figure. Well, in this case, we're gonna be working with a URL that has an image of a microscope. If you'll notice, it's flagged everything correctly. We've got the figure of the microscope flagged with the right label, and we've even got the text. Again, this is the model that's supposed to grab the caption, and it's done that. So what are my impressions from this model? Well, out of the gate, I think it's very, very good. I can already see a lot of applications for it, especially if I'm working with print books. If I'm working with something that's a bit more out of scope, maybe medieval manuscripts, I would wanna do a little bit more testing. I'll save that for another video if there's enough um, need for it, let me know in the comments down below and I'll do something with applying this model across different kind of medieval data sets. 
But for right now, I'm either going to be using this model at, um, wholesale to just work with data uh, at the Holocaust Museum in DC and process some archival records and experiment with it there. I might even consider fine-tuning it a bit further to really kind of capture the kind of ledgers that I work with, which are a bit probably more out of scope than what the model has seen. All in all, though, I'm pretty excited about this. Hopefully, this, or this notebook helps you get up and running. As always, I put all the code out there for free. It's linked in the description down below. So feel free to use this notebook. It's got an MIT license. So pick it up and run with it as you wish. And also, as always, thank you to all my Patreon and YouTube member supporters, as well as the people who buy me coffee. If you get a lot out of this channel, please do consider supporting it via one of these platforms. I do all this for free just to help out the general community, and I try to keep the content as relevant as possible. So if you want to see something in particular, let me know in the comments down below, and I'll do a video on that. Thanks for listening.